Hello. As I was sitting down to chat with you this week, I was I w was not concerned, but I was just like, well, there's not much news this week. This should go pretty quickly. Uh, got some interesting stuff to talk about, but I knew I, th well, I thought it was going to be a short episode. <laughs> and then as I was getting ready to close my inbox and, and start chatting with you, some breaking news came in. So I haven't even had the chance to script this breaking news. This will be a podcast exclusive. I'll write it up on the blog probably next week, but you are going to be the very first to know about some very important and exclusive news. Given that I haven't had time to think about it, though, I'm going to wait till the end of the episode. So I'm going to go through all the stuff I've already thought about, put some thought toward, and am, am hopefully able to talk about intelligent <laughs> We, but uh, we'll get to that breaking news at the end of the episode. So please stick around for that. But let's get started with the biggest news this week. Uh, I think, you know, one of the things you always hear about Portland, uh, mostly because I say it an awful lot, is we have a, a, a sort of risk averse investment community here. And um, because of that, sometimes you don't see the the types of funding rounds you see in other communities or you don't see the amount of venture capital kind of pouring in to portland as you would see in other communities but uh that changed in the second quarter of 2024 for the pacific northwest in particular that's because three of the biggest VC deals in the Pacific Northwest in the second quarter of 2024 happened right here in Portland. That was, if you'll remember, that was Boulder Care, that was Hydraulics, and that was uh, Rapirio Health. Boulder Care and Hydraulics both raised $35 million each, and I believe Rapirio Health was in the 14 to $15 million. It's always difficult to raise funds, it's not so much a finish line as the start of another huge race. And so it just creates a whole new series of challenges for those founders, given that they, they have acquired and raised those funds. But I think it is important to note that those fundraisers, that venture capital coming into the community, coming into Portland and being used for those companies is is among the best in the Pacific Northwest. We're already partway into the third quarter and I'm, I'm not seeing a ton of activity, but it's summer. You know, everybody quiets down a little bit. The, you know, the VCs take their summer break. Uh, they probably won't start picking up on, you know, major activity until we get to August, September timeframe. So that's not unusual, but uh, all that being said, it's really nice to see Portland ranking high in the Pacific Northwest for the amount of venture capital being invested in startups here. Is this, there's something here, right? You know, we could do this every week. All you have to do is just subscribe and we can have little startup chats like this week after week after week. I'll be here. I'd love to have you here too. So please subscribe. Thanks. Remember our friends at Latino Founders? We talk about them quite a bit. You know, they've got accelerator programs. They have Pitch Latino. Historically, they've done a Startup Weekend Latino. Well, they're taking their premier event, Pitch Latino, on the road yet again. You know, it used to just be kind of a Portland event. They have recently gone to Seattle with that event, and now they're headed to Central Oregon with Pitch Latino. So if you're a Latin-led startup, if you are in Central Oregon or perhaps in Bend proper, and you would like the opportunity to take the stage and tell the community about what you're building, Pitch Latino wants to give you that opportunity. They are pretty much business agnostic. They've had everything from like, consumer products to a bakery to technology startups they're really all across the board but i would highly encourage you if you're a latino founder latina 
founder with something interesting and a story to tell, I would highly encourage you to get your applications in. The event itself will be October 1st, but I believe the applications are due by late August. So pretty straightforward application. Shouldn't take you a long time. Please don't procrastinate. This is always a popular event. They have a lot of startups they have to sift through and choose from. And so I would just encourage you to get that application in as soon as you can. And I look forward to seeing your startup on stage in Bend at Pitch Latino Bend come October 1st. Here's another little thing that I don't know if this is public. I don't know if I'm actually supposed to say it, but I'm I'm willing to, to, <laughs> to have Juan yell at me if I'm not supposed to say it. But I think with, with Pitch Latino Bend, the winner of Pitch Latino Bend not only will they get the big prize money and, and all those kind of things, and all participants get some prize money just for taking the stage. I think that's important to note as well. So it's not one of those where it's like, hey, waste your time, you know, kind of like founder as tribute or like startup as entertainment for other people. No, much like Pitch Black, Pitch Latino says, you're a founder, your time is valuable. Even just getting on stage, you deserve some compensation, reward, uh, money, prize money for that kind of thing. So everybody gets something, but the big winner, you know, gets the big prize money, but also, and here's the thing, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say, but we're friends. So I'll let you know, and maybe, maybe just keep it between us for now till I know if it's public or not, but the winner of Pitch Latino Bend has the option of also taking the stage at Pitch Latino with Portland. We have to call it Pitch Latino Portland now because there's Pitch Latino Seattle and Pitch Latino Bend. So Pitch Latino, which, which ha will happen in Portland in October, the winner from Bend has the option of pitching there as well. So they could potentially... If you are the winner of Pitch Latino Bend and you win Pitch Latino Portland, you could feasibly see a substantial amount of non-dilutive funding for your Latin-led startup. So that's a pretty exciting opportunity. Again, Latino, Latina, Latin-founded startups of, you know, any kind, please take this opportunity for Bend and maybe get the opportunity to pitch in Portland as well. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Startups are hard. And, you know, as a founder, you kind of don't know what you don't know. And yet you have all these questions and you're a driven person. So you're like, I can figure this out. I can figure out how to do it. I can solve this problem. I can get these things done. But sometimes wouldn't it be nice if there was just someone to kind of help you along the way where you didn't have to figure it out on your own, but somebody could say, hey, I've been there. I've done that. Let me tell you how I did it. And maybe that could help you do it as well. Like what if there was some kind of like startup school that helped you through that? Well, now there's a local startup school run by Pat Chung that's going to help you do that completely for free. The idea being that you get together they have a certain topic they're going to go over. They help you kind of think through it. They provide their guidance. They answer questions, you know, like school where there's a subject where you talk about it and get to ask questions and get to engage with somebody who is really well educated on that particular subject matter. That's the idea behind this project. The first class of startup school is going to have to do with how to win your first customers. And, you know, every startup likes to have those customers. It's taking place on Friday, August 2nd. There's a meetup page that I will link up so that you can attend if there's still space. This has been pretty popular and uh, people were already pretty excited about it when it was announced. So I'm hoping you can get in there. You know, I'm a huge fan of Pat Chung. He was kind enough not only to be a mentor for Pi, which was a startup accelerator program that, that I've run but he also was a mentor in residence. So not only did he help mentor startups, but he would hang out with us day in and day out. 
and be super helpful to startups. And in conversations with Pat, you know, one of the things he's super passionate about is he's like, I want to enable anyone to be a founder. He's a huge fan of like sharing that very most like basic knowledge about startups and being successful in startups. And he gets really energized and excited about that kind of stuff. So I expect startup school to be amazing. I think if you're a founder, especially a first time founder, it could be hugely beneficial to you. So if it sounds interesting to you, might be time to register for startup school. Granted, it's summer school, but as Pat said, you know, the most driven founders are perfectly willing to take summer school. Okay, startup school happens Friday morning. What else happens on Friday? This is, I, I know, I didn't say there would be a quiz, but if I'm talking about school, you got to assume there's going to be a pop quiz. So the quiz is Friday. August 2nd, that's your hint. What's happening in the evening time, like happy hour on the first Friday of the month? So if this is the first time you're hearing of it, or if you maybe tried to go in July and you're like, but I tried to go, but there wasn't one, then yeah, that's because it was July 5th and everybody was on vacation, but people are back, they're working. First Friday is designed to be a happy hour for the community hosted by Upstart Collective that not only brings together the people who work out of the Upstart Collective space, but also people from throughout the Portland startup community. And it's really just designed to be a social happy hour kind of activity to get you connected with interesting people in the community, to give you access to folks who you might not have the time to meet with because you're so busy with your startup stuff. So if that sounds interesting to you, I believe it's at Upstart Collective East Side, which is nice because they have like balconies and outdoor space and that kind of thing, which this time of year, and with the view they have at Upstart Collective East Side, well worth it, something you should take advantage of. So that happens happy hour five o'clock-ish at Upstart Collective on the East Side, first Friday, every month. It just didn't happen in July because of the way Independence Day fell. So get back on that horse, get back going to First Fridays at Upstart Collective, and I'm hoping it provides you with the opportunity to get more connected with the Portland startup community. Okay, now we're to, now we're to the completely like unplanned, like this just came into my inbox. I haven't even had time to think about it. I already kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, but didn't I try not to I try not to spoil the surprise for you because you've hung around and, and you deserve to be as surprised as I was to get the news. But we talked about Latino founders, the folks who run Pitch Latino and how they're doing Pitch Latino Bend. You may also remember that Latino Founders has a startup accelerator program that they were recruiting for. Well, guess what? First, right here for you, I have the list of companies that have been accepted into the 2024 cohort of the Latino Founders Accelerator. And guess what? There are 32 companies in that accelerator cohort. Not all local, but 32 again, industry agnostic, so they're all across the board, but 32 interesting companies and startups who uh, Juan Barraza and his team felt were at the perfect stage to be supported by a startup accelerator. So Juan was kind enough to share the news with me early. He gave me the names of all the startups that are going to be participating. So I'm going to read those off to you just so you can be like, oh, hey, I know that company or something may pique your interest. And you're like, I want to know more about that company. I will write up a blog post next week. I just, because I had the news and because you were here and I knew we would be sitting down together, I just, I wanted to give you the details first because you're that important to me. You make time every week to come hang out with me and listen to me blather on about Portland startups. And so I just wanted to share this with you first because I really appreciate you being here. Cool. So forgive me if I stumble over some of the names because I literally just like cut and paste. Just put them in, put them down so I can read them. So here we go. 
Latino Founders Accelerator 2024 cohort is A's Heating and Cooling, A's and Flow, AMX Consulting, Authentica Consulting, Belonging at, BME Recovery Content Productions, Co-Creator, El Dorado Art Studio, ENO or ENO Design, Global Based, Hob Sauce, huge fan of the Hob Sauce, I had the chance to work with David in the Built Accelerator, and uh, I have a refrigerator full of various Hob Sauces, if you haven't tried Hob Sauce, please do. David's amazing. The sauce is amazing. Psyched to see them in this program, but I digress. Hire a Latino in Luminar, Juntos PDX, La Casa de Mama, Life Stages, Loco por la Aventura, Lynn Blanks Creations, Marian Numi, Marshall Profile, Mr. Doggo, Okada, Portland Water, <laughs> this is another one. I haven't had a chance to work with these founders, but I just love this product. If you have uh, ever talked to anyone in Portland, they're like, yeah, we have really good water here. We have really good tap water. Like we don't need canned water or that kind of thing uh, or bottled water. Uh, we just have excellent excellent tap water and uh this one cracks me up because it's basically like they're canning our excellent tap water they might do something else to it i don't know but i'm excited to get the chance to learn more about this company as they go through the accelerator because i'm pretty excited about the portland water brand it has that potential like in some ways I'm not i'm not i'm not saying it needs to be as big as this or or has to be as big as this but like from a brand perspective it has a little bit of like liquid death kind of thing going on there so uh just really curious to see what happens with portland water and and curious to follow their journey again i digress i apologize i'm just i'm literally just reading these names for the first time so i haven't even had time to think about it i haven't read through them myself we're doing this together so i apologize if i'm going off on tangents but I'm kind of excited about this stuff. Okay, uh, RMC, Floral Designs, Sherpa, WTF, uh, Solar, Brazolo, Solar Cycle, The Venderia, Tizana, Mexicana, Training to Impact, Vibras, Way of Being. So there you have it. Those are the 32 companies. <laughs> I apologize for going off on tangents, but like Hob and Portland Water, I'm super psyched about them. You know how I've been so bullish about the consumer products lately. I can't help it. There's a lot of good activity there here in Portland. And as my co-founder of Built Oregon, Mitch Doherty, always likes to say, Oregon is the Silicon Valley of consumer products. There's more knowledge and activity and interesting innovation here than I would argue practically anywhere else in the world this is the hub of consumer products and so i'm always excited to see those companies and those founders getting the support they need to build amazing portland brands and oregon brands and uh and really just continuing that tradition of amazing consumer products here in town and throughout the state congratulations to latino founders i know how hard it is to select companies for your accelerator i know what a challenge it is to like decide who's in and who's out and and how hard it is for founders to put themselves out there let alone having to deal with both not making it in but also making it in as a founder that puts an additional amount of stress on your plate and many more things for you to do than you already had to do and being a founder already takes a lot so um super excited about our friends at latino founders and all their new friends who are now part of their accelerator program and we'll look forward to continuing to cover each and every one of these companies and the accelerator program as time goes on so thank you for dealing with my unscripted delivery but uh, i wanted to make sure that you had that news before anyone else did because you were kind enough to show up and listen to me babble about it so thank you
Okay, so that's it for this week. I uh, hope you're doing well. Hope you're hanging in there. And until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work. I don't always have breaking news, but I always have interesting startup news every single week, like this video right here. I think that's it. I think I made it. That was a lot easier than I expected it to be. So let's hope it worked.